I would like the member to be instructed to not introduce any pornography today. It's, okay. it's on, an, on the internet. It's everywhere. All right. All right. All right. Chair, ask Ms. Green to proceed. Hey, what's this button for? Doomsday! You are here now. You are here now. You are here now. Your breathing is stressing me out. This will affect the entire planet. I know, but it's like so stressful. Can I get that one more ice water? And I'll get two more glasses of white wine, and I don't need the judgy face. There's a comet headed directly towards Earth. Do you know how many the world is ending meetings we've had over the last two years? Drought, famine. Oh, and the ozone is so boring. No, 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 no. Um, I got a new job and Congress was on vacation and then I was sick. So this is the welcome back episode of the Psycho Semantic Cast. Been looking forward to having some sort of conversation with you for a minute. I think we're missing the Republican debate tonight, aren't we? We're going to have to watch it afterwards. Oh, is that tonight? I, is that, mm. I think it is. I keep seeing coverage. The uh, The orange one declined again to attend because he says he's already won so why even be there right yeah it is tonight at the ronald reagan presidential library (laughs) of course of course well look i'm in texas and we've got a ronald reagan airport we've got in austin just north of austin there's a ronald reagan memorial boulevard and you just can't get away from the guy. No. So we're we're oh we're leaving Texas, Darren. Is this breaking news, or did I insinuate this to you yet? You have insinuated it to me, but uh, this okay. episode will be out before too long. So I don't know if you've said it on the air. I some I can't I can never remember if I've had a conversation in private or if I heard it in a podcast with some of my friends. You know, right, so I can't remember right. if you said it on anything besides our conversation yeah well it's 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 a done deal now man aj uh she's apparently very very well respected with her company so she tried to she tried to step down from district manager to store manager um and i said hey babe go for it i'll i'll support whatever you want to do so at the time i told you austin was like the and not not only did she get talked into um staying as a district manager, but she was told, you literally have carte blanche to either do this district you're in now or a different one. Mm. And um, (laughs) we're not fleeing a red state for a blue state, Darren, (laughs) but we are going to the home of uh, Ron DeSanctimonious. Florida bound. Um, I got to be quiet because I haven't told my daughter yet. AJ wants to break it to her tomorrow night, but... uh, yeah, okay. you could put it on there, man. It's I'm, it's official. It's for sure. Hey, congratulations on that. Um, what do you know around what we're lo- we're looking at uh, Tampa? I'll be 15 minutes away from the White Sand Beach. I'll be an hour away from Disney World, Universal Studios. I mean, come on, man, you can't beat that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's cool. So it's it's a part of Florida I've been to. There's a lot of Florida I have not been to. It's a long state. <laughs> it's <laughs> yes. like California. So moving out of, I don't know what people call Texas, but you're moving to America's well, penis. Well, we're moving. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what you would call Texas, man. But we're, I don't know. We're kind of trading off one state for another that's very similar I mean, there's like, okay, so you've got you've got Austin, which is kind of the blue pocket here in Texas. And then I think I think it's what more maybe like around Miami and going down to Key West. It's a little bit more liberal, like the far south part of the state. Is that you? That's yeah. my understanding anyway. T- they tend to be, although there are a lot of extremely conservative Cuban immigrants in the Miami yes. area. But. Yeah, and they 
probably wouldn't necessarily be conservative on certain aspects, right? Certain topics, but you know how manipulative that political machine can be. Family values. And jobs at all Beetlejuice performances. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't medical marijuana legal there? In Florida? I think so. Think about the age of the population there, man. You you know you know us old geezers like to like to smoke a little of the the chronic. I'm pretty sure you're right. You don't have medical marijuana in Texas, I would imagine. Absolutely not. <clears throat> no, what they do here is they do that cr- kratom and delta aid and you know all the sub variants that that really stink. <laughs> it's almost just like you're smoking burnt rope with tobacco or something. They keep trying to add things to the medical marijuana registry here, but we've also got a bill in, in November that would, uh, in shorthand, I think I've mentioned it to you mm-hmm. before, but it was the regulate marijuana like alcohol bill, which is very clunky to say, but easy enough mm-hmm. to understand. That's okay. on the ballot in two months, basically. A lot the Citizens Initiative. You've, everybody heard me talking about it all summer and all spring. The constitutional amendment to enshrine abortion access and birth control in the state constitution. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's a big, big one. So it can't be legislated away. And they got enough to get a regular bill about legalizing recreational but now some of the state democrats are annoyed because 2024 mm-hmm. is when most of them are up for re-election but no time like the present to try to protect reproductive rights you don't want to wait a fucking year just to benefit some fucking people especially with uh well we already dated this episode talking about the the republican debate but our redistricting our gerrymandered ruled unconstitutional five times by the state supreme court and Mm -hmm. the republicans said well we don't give a fuck we're just gonna use them anyway and get back together and redraw the maps they just passed another one i think last night or at least they came into agreement with the two democrats that were on the redistricting committee going along with it it's still a lopsided gerrymander because if you did it by representational voting it would be like a 544 mm-hmm. republican democrat or 46 54 Repu- republican still having the most but it's so fucking yes. lopsided and it's like they protected their own seats added one or two more and then just went along with the five republican members on the committee so there's currently <laughs> a citizen's initiative in the process of taking the redistricting power away from all elected politicians because it's the governor, the secretary of state, the auditor, and people from the house and the Senate in the state right now. And since they've already gerrymandered themselves into power, it's almost always mostly Republicans. So this would be a citizens redistricting committee And it would redraw the maps immediately. I mean, not like that day, but like if it passes in 2024 when they're trying to have it on the ballot, there would be a redrawing of the maps instead of waiting in, you know, fucking eight years or seven years. So I was in a shitty mood last night Mm -hmm. watching all this happen because there's supposed to be citizen review at least and they're at least a supposed to pretend like they give a fuck what we have to say but they went on recess until like 10 30 at night last night and then introduced maps had a quick vote and now it's on to the next stage where they're supposed to have the house and the senate vote on them so they did a quick uh get in and get out yep undercover of darkness (laughs) yeah yep not a lot of not a lot of time no uh Mm -hmm six months and whatever warning like the people Mm -hmm. in the movie we're going to talk about eventually uh yeah that's right that's right uh you know we're just talking about a movie too well you know you know how we do on this show (laughs) i think we've we're definitely in the episode now so i want to say hey lance 
from the horror returns how are you doing great darren thanks for the uh for the invite man honored uh honored to be back among the the one of the one of the greats in the yeah. in the in the legion podcast world <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, you are you know i should have counted but i think now you are one of my most repeated guests so thank you for jumping into this chaos so nice. many times and like i said i think earlier on but just in case i didn't welcome back everybody uh my little break is over. I am hopefully not sick anymore. I am more in the swing of things with my new job at the museum. And yeah, Congress is back giving us hand job videos and government shutdowns and all kinds of Vape. stuff. <laughs> well, huh? Vaping at pregnant women. You were saying. So you were, uh, you were talking about the gerrymandering. I think the reason that we're doing this show is because I brought up something that caught my attention, a new story involving a group called uh, Extinction Rebellion. Yes, yes. Um, and it's interesting um, because they can't really gerrymander the way that their like internal government is set up. It was a group that was UK formed, but I guess now they've got um, you know got groups all over the world, but. They don't do any kind of like uh, you're Republican, you're Democrat, you're independent or whatever. They'll take like a cross section of like, you know, 15 to 25 people to all get together and, um, you know, kind of majority vote solve problems. But they go out of their way to get, you know, a segment so that everybody's represented. And I don't know why we can't make something like that work. I, w I was listening to one of the um, Open to Debate episodes. I was telling you about that podcast, and mm -hmm. they had an argument. Is the two-party system working, or is it failing? <laughs> and um, I don't know. I would I would love to see a little more representation. I would suggest everybody looking into ranked choice voting. Yes, that was one of the big topics was in it? that debate. Yes. There's people trying to get it passed here. Uh, it's mm -hmm. passing randomly. Uh, you know, your co-host, Brian, they passed That's right. <laughs> ranked choice voting in Alaska. I think right before we we all spoke on your wonderful show last time. That's right. Okay. Yep. I heard about Alaska and uh, Vermont, maybe, or probably where did it start? New Hampshire, something like that. One of the, yeah, one of those North <laughs> mixture of liberal conservative leftist libertarian like places especially with smaller populations I, th I think it's easier to get ranked choice voting passed through but i think ultimately it would be it's kind of like other other governments uh, there's the other parties have sway and say in the larger larger scale you know, like in the UK and Canada, there are still main parties, but it's not like, oh, right. it's been four years. Let's look at the Libertarian and the Green Party and they go away again for four more years, except for small government, I, I think, or lower level government, not small government, because big government, small governments, again, depending on who's saying it, means different right. things. Of course. <laughs> Uh, the eye of the beholder sometimes. That would be cool. Sometimes it seems like a, this Supreme Court would never let it happen because they're too comfy. Yeah, they've surprised us with a few things, right? Like, haven't they really taken the gerrymandering thing? Here we are on gerrymandering again. Did, haven't they really taken that head on and shocked a lot of people with, you know, oh. some of their decisions on the U.S. Supreme Court on that? A little bit, but to varied uh, degrees. My state, not to bring it all back to me, but this is my show. We had a case in front of the U.S. Supreme Court for our gerrymandered districts. And our Secretary of State argued that we passed this anti-gerrymandering legislation. And that would take care of it In uh, at this time. It was 2019. So it would be... That'll take care of it in a year when they redraw the map. So don't worry about it. Just toss the case. And they're like, <laughs> okay, we toss the case. And then here we are. The saga that I previously described, there's supposed to be a 
40, 35 or 40 percent support from the party not in power. Okay. But but if you don't get their support, you can shove through maps that are good for four years. So that's what they did. They just ignored the, the Supreme Court and the state Supreme Court, which was a Republican majority. Mm hmm said the maps were unconstitutional. They just said, well, we don't care. We're going to force through the maps. So yeah, our last two elections were on maps that were ruled unconstitutional five times. And they did pretty much the same thing this time. I don't know if this is why the weak ass Democrats just said, okay, give us a couple seats and we'll go along with it. Or, I'm not really sure. I'm not tapped into either of the main. I think I registered in the Green Party when I was 18 because they weren't officially recognized in the state because they didn't have enough people. Okay. But we have open primaries, so you don't have to register for a party to vote in a primary or anything like that. And obviously, party affiliation doesn't matter in general elections. So, I mean, I could go vote in the Republican primary, but I couldn't vote in both. I couldn't vote in the Democratic primary and the Republican primary. Yeah, it's it's like that here as well. Okay. It's like one or the other. Um, and I think that ranked that ranked choice, is it called ranked choice? Voting? Ranked is choice that, voting, yeah. Yeah, I think that'll do away, right, with a lot of the fears that people have that the Green Party is going to siphon off, you know, votes from Biden or – you know, the libertarian, God forbid, is going to siphon a few votes from the Republican or whatever, right? Totally. Uh, that That's what it's been shown to do in the little pockets. Where, you know, I, maybe I should have a ranked choice voting person on here sometime to really explain it. But from my understanding, it's, okay, I want Lance to be my president, but right. my second choice is Darren. And then if Lance doesn't get enough votes, that vote goes to Darren. So you can vote for your favorite person. And if that favorite person is popular enough, they win. If they're not popular enough, you get your mm -hmm. second choice or your third choice. And they, they, you know, they whittle it down. And I think there's even a thing where, you know, like uh, in the primaries, like we talked about, people can win primaries with less than the majority of the vote because there's sure fucking what, Eight so guys many on the ballot. Yeah. Eight guys and a woman in the Republican debate right now. And that's not even all the people yes. that are running. So, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> because yeah, so, the great one need not be there. It's, <laughs> he's ordained. <laughs> uh, you know, he's he's busy working on his appeal to his fraud case in New York that really will it will dissolve all of his bus businesses in New York. Well, or as, as my mom messaged me earlier today, she said, fraud case, civil case, that's fucking bullshit. Isn't fraud something that should take send you to jail? <laughs> Shouldn't that be more of a criminal case? So I don't know about the specifics of the case. Are you are you familiar with it? Uh, it's mostly the, the one that was just uh, mostly decided. The damages haven't been decided yet, but... His okay. lawyers were sanctioned. They were all fined like $8,000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the case was centered around a long-standing, long-rumored, often kind of admitted to practice that the Trumps talked about, like Ivanka has talked about it, Donald's talked about it. They've all sort of casually talked about it before they started getting in trouble for it. So they would okay. – they would value – they would report the value of a property they have different when it came time to pay the taxes on it. They well, would... that's just good business sense, Darren. I mean, come on, man. You can't you can't blame a guy for, you know, wanting to save a buck or – You got to pick a lane because then when time came to get the loans, they overvalue yes. the property. I know you were being facetious, but I had to <laughs> for the people that are only half paying attention because it's so hard to just follow all of his legal issues among yes, all the other going stuff on. going on. So, I mean, there was one property in New York where the size and the value was changed 
five or six times over a couple years. And it varied from it's worth like 18 million to uh, 300% more, whatever that is. Cause some so, of the, some of the so references not, were, yeah. Not just market fluctuations, Dan. No, 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 no. Like, uh, <laughs> just, just smart business. Um, uh, there's a big dispute about Mar-a-Lago. That's a thing that they were sticking to now sure. two, two years ago. Or maybe it was three. The Trump family filed an appeal to the state tax board in Florida saying that their evaluation of Mar-a-Lago being valued $25 million or somewhere around there, like 18 to $25 million, was too high. Okay. Today, while they're complaining about it saying that the judge who just read that report and didn't rule that it was worth that much... They said the judge decided that it was worth that. It was the state taxation board. Uh, Eric or Don Jr. said it's actually worth about a billion dollars. Oh, wow. Okay. When three sure. years ago they said it was definitely worth less than $25 million. Well, man, that's, that's some appreciation and value there. Yeah, so it's kind of like the crime of fucking with a bank, and that's usually when re- if he had just screwed over poor people, he'd probably have been fine. Great point. Great point. Or he might get Al Capone, right? They might get him on on tax evasion or something. Yeah, you start fucking with the rich people. Now you got some problems. That was that case. I think they have to decide how much damages there are going to be, and um. Yeah, there, there's a lot of, well, we paid everybody back. So the uh, the writer's strike looks like it might be coming to a close. I believe, yeah, I believe they've come to an agreement. And I wonder if they got what they were asking for. I'm pretty sure at least one of the things is they won't be writing scripts using AI. That That's a huge one from what I hear. That was like one of the biggest, I guess, bones of contention. And rightfully so. Who who wants to go to a movie with an AI written script? How good can it be? I remembered being sort of excited to see the announcement of a sequel to a movie, but then seeing that it was supposed to be written by AI and then being deflated. But I can't remember what it is right now. Yeah, I mentioned it on the podcast. I read I read an article. Um, to, oh, Brightburn Two. Yes. That That's is what it read. is. Okay. Yeah, I think that um, I think that that that, the, that those rumors have been safely put to bed. Oh, good. I don't really want to see what a computer thinks the second one should be. I'm kind of that way. May I might read a short story or a, mm-hmm. or a poem written by a computer, but even taking out the creative people whose jobs would just go away with the mm-hmm. self checkout lane of Hollywood. That's right. I like that um there seems to be a bigger labor movement going on and people noticing it and you know as much as I can talk shit about Joe Biden, I mm-hmm. think he was the first president to go to a picket line and yeah, talk with striking workers and give the strike leader, a nap platform to do his talking. Um, I can't remember his name, but definitely got a lot more attention with Biden going down there. Now, let's just hope he doesn't mm-hmm. talk to his old friend Mitch McConnell across the aisle and <laughs> find a way to railroad strike it. But- yeah, well, I, I, I had respect for him for doing it, and I'd you know, kind of message my mom about it. Again, mom cynicism kicks in overtime, Darren, and she's like, oh, sounds like a great opportunity for a photo op for Biden. <laughs> so yeah. she's, not as, she's not his biggest fan, that's for yeah. sure. Well, I mean, fuck, neither am I. <laughs> Historically, I guess, his, his record, let it speak for itself, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, just because you're better than somebody else doesn't mean you're good. Yeah, that's right. Lesser of two evils. And here we are talking about that two-party system. We need the need the rank choice. We need the 
uh, ungerrymandered districts. I don't know how uh, how much leeway you have with where you're buying your house, mm-hmm. but something I never used to think about, but I have thought about a lot in the last five, ten years is look up who the representatives of the address you're thinking about. Okay, I'll See, do that. We're we we're definitely going to be renting. Okay. Um, when we're in Florida, we're gonna we're gonna keep the house here. Cool. And uh, daughter and granddaughters are gonna live in it, and uh, oh, nice. That way, because we it may only be a few years. It was a it was a two year contract that the wife signed, so we'll see how that goes. Right. A lot of apartments in Tampa. I've lived in this neighborhood for I think ten or fifteen years, but okay. I used to live a few blocks away. I moved a few blocks. I'm in a different congressional district. Just by moving a few blocks, huh? Yep. A few blocks in the same neighborhood. Wow. Got to pay attention to that stuff. True. Especially the way they draw those maps. <laughs> kind of like this. <laughs> yep. Squiggly seahorses and yeah. crab people in Tetris shape. Not That's even Tetris right. shapes. Tetris shapes would no. make more sense. Much more sense. That'd be blocky at least, right? Like broken glass <clears throat> or a punched windshield. Might be yes. more representative of the gerrymand. Didn't take us too long to get to 2021's Don't Look Up. Yeah, see, I, for some reason, I thought this movie was released pre-COVID, but uh, I guess it was filmed and every... I'm, I'm assuming it was filmed before COVID. I'm not, I'm not too familiar with, with the how the filming went for this one, but I was surprised to see it was 2021 when I rewatched it last night. For some reason, I remembered it being earlier than that. It felt like for some reason, but pretty recent film. They started working on it before or right around when COVID first hit. It was shot. It was delayed because of Ah, COVID. And then it after it took them longer to make it than they had planned it also took longer to release i think it switched companies once or twice okay well one thing about one thing about mckay he can he can get that on he must be one of those that uh, people really want to work, want to work with you know you you have certain directors kubrick was always that way and uh oh gosh i'm trying to think of the guy that did the <laughs> Uh, he did all the heist movies, the remakes of Ocean's Eleven and Ocean's 2009. Uh, but we want the oh, newer Steven one. Oh, Steven Soderbergh. Soderbergh! Yeah, seems like everybody wants to work work with that guy. Well, what, McKay, didn't he write for one of your favorite TV shows of all time? Are you was talking that... about, did he work Did he work on Community? I think he was the head writer, well, he might have, but I think he was the head writer of Saturday Night Live. That for, would make sense for yeah. a while. That would, like that would make sense. Yeah. Five, five, six years. Uh, but I don't remember. Was the late nineties, early thousands. Well, early thousands, they had the Will Ferrell, George W. That was some pretty good years, man. That was some uh, pretty good years. I, I, I don't know. I'm one of those SNL apologists. You know, I mean, there's some seasons better than others, but I can't think of a single season I hated, you know? Well, it, and, and in some ways, thinking along those lines, you know, satire only has the the society that it's trying to reflect to work with. So you were talking about the cast. Uh, what? Jennifer Lawrence, Leonardo DiCaprio, Timothy Chalamet, Meryl Streep, the... Melanie Linsky, Kate Blanchett. I didn't even oh, recognize yeah. her until That's this right. time around. Oh, Kate Blanchett? She looked a little bit different. She was all made up and definitely wearing a push-up bra in every scene and kind of uh kind of the oversexed news anchor there, along with uh Tyler Perry doing the morning show where um well we're gonna talk about your fun little science section at the end, but first we gotta get this uh Get this online romance to get all the clicks up. 
with on Ariana Grande. <laughs> yes. And it was like, who was that kid, kid, kid Cuddy? Is that who was oh, is that who played the, the, the boyfriend so. in that? Okay. He looked familiar. I, I think I recognized him from X. Uh, that came out last year. If it is the guy from X, that is Kid Cudi or Cutie or however you say it. Sure. But I've only... Yeah. What, he was also in the new Bill and Ted movie. Uh, yeah. As himself. That was, a, that was a good one, man. I, I had fun with that movie. Definitely. Uh, I definitely enjoyed their offspring. <laughs> they were a lot of fun. Yeah. I think they did a good job uh, mimicking their film parents. Um, so don't look up. I'm sure you watched it during, uh, I don't know if you want to call it step back, shut down, lockdown. Sure. Quarantine. Sure. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people first watched it then. And since it was the time and since a lot of art is influenced by what it's around. And I think there's some stuff in it that is COVID. There's so much in this movie so much so many references ultimately it was purposefully written as an environmental movie well for the most part right but there's definitely a lot of there's a lot of other stuff in there right so... yeah yeah the 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 seed the seed idea between mm-hmm. um mckay and who who did he write i recognize the name because i think they've done some stuff together like when they were doing the credits oh, shit. What was early name? on in the movie we so, should have done our homework man it, it, <laughs> is on the i did a little bit but i try not to have too okay. many notes because it seems so yeah. prepared something sirota who was like a journalist who wrote who was a speech writer for bernie sanders and not wrote kidding. for uh, like nice. Jacobin okay. and The Guardian, mm-hmm. I think. All right. Um, yeah, David Sirota. Uh, there, they were. How much of a summary of "Don't Look Up" should we do? There's, it, it's, it's all about existential dread, right? Ex, an existential threat, and would our society right now be will be able to deal with something like that so here's the thing anytime and and i've noticed this darren i i I try hard to find a a really good climate change movie but unless you want to listen to um al gore you know rap for an hour and a half and show pie charts and stuff um it's really hard to get on film man because it's it's although as we learned this summer maybe it isn't quite as slow moving as we think it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, you always got to have that punch, right? That extra drama, that really, really short time frame. like uh, Armageddon is right around the corner. Or like, remember that movie the day after tomorrow where the world froze like instantly. Yes. You know, so it's, it's very, very hard to portray creeping uh, danger. Right. You know, so I don't know. I guess maybe that's why he, I'm guessing that's why he used the parallel of a of a, of a comet hurtling toward Earth that can, you know, what do they call it extinction level event. Yep, extinction level event. From what I saw, so they said that they were just sort of talking about uh, McKay and Sirota were talking to climate scientists. And each they were sort of hoping to get some sort of like help hopeful. And well, yeah, always worse than okay. they expected. Oh, well, it's so weird that mainstream news doesn't really talk about it, or if they do, it's way after. It's way late. It's like the what's it called the the Daily Toke or what the Morning Rip or whatever the fuck Tyler the Perry and Kate, <laughs> Kate Blanchett's right. show the is. It's like. Rip. Yeah, let's let's have the celebrities. We try to keep the bad sure. news light and light and fluffy. <laughs> yeah, and Jennifer Lawrence is like, maybe it's not supposed to be fun. Maybe you're supposed to. They didn't want to hear that. And they tossed uh, uh, McKay and Sirota was like, it's kind of like everybody's ignoring it because it's mm-hmm. not fun. It's not exciting. It's being distracted from because. Some people feel like it's hopeless. Some people feel like it's not real. I mean, well, we've got the don't look up. It's in the title. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're like, it's like everybody knows that there's a meteor 
that's going to hit the earth and nobody cares. And that's, yeah. that, that's yeah. where it started. And, and also, but, but do they really know? Right. I mean, the denial, they, they did a really good job on that section where they were showing all the denialists. And then the, of course you had the, it wasn't a red cap that she was wearing at first. I think she wore a red one toward the end, but I love that their caps literally said, uh, don't look up <laughs> yeah. what the, the other team had said, please look up or yeah. I, so I like the way that this movie started because it, it, it's actually, I think it was pretty realistic and it also feeds into, you know, why with the exception of, you know, Dr. Ty, Neil deGrasse Tyson and maybe Bill Nye at one point, although he kind of loses me a little bit, he gets a little bit repetitive, but you don't really have a whole lot of celebrity scientists out there, right? Because that's not their their bag. So I just thought it was really interesting the way McKay started it, where, you know, they're double checking their math. And, you know, first they're really excited because she's discovered something new. And then they run the numbers and it's like, oh, oh we have a problem. And then you, you'll you notice that uh, the, the scientists working with her didn't, didn't even want to bring it up in that first meeting. He said... Let me go home and sleep on this one before yeah. we talk about what we're discovering with these numbers. And then all all that uh, Jennifer Lawrence said was just, uh, I got to go get high. So yes, yes. <laughs> they get the initial shock. And then I guess a lot of the first act of the movie is them trying to communicate it to people that are more interested in, like you said, you know, fluff. Is that kind of how you would read the first act? Yeah. You know, she, Jennifer Lawrence's character's boyfriend works for, I'm guessing it's a parallel to the New York times or something like that. Try it. Yes. Uh, and I, I know that there was a decent amount of negative reviews of the movie by people who wrote for those types of publications. And uh -oh. but there would also be contrary <laughs> reviews saying, of course, they didn't like it. This is about yeah. them. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you you would think I mean, well, I, you saw the movie about Epstein, right? Uh, what was it called? Uh, something like She Said or something like that that came out earlier in the year. Oh, I'm not sure uh, if you caught that. The Jeffrey it was Epstein well done. Movie? No, but yeah, I read the, uh, I read Catch and Kill. And he's mentioned okay. in that somewhat. Yeah, so, like, this is, you know, New York Times, and, I mean, that's, like, our last bastion of truth, right? They're the ones that are actually willing to get stuff out there, and, you know, they they weren't even willing to take it <laughs> over the goal line, you know? We're not <laughs> getting just, enough clicks. Not getting enough clicks. <laughs> they, were <looking> at, <laughs> they were looking at all the graphs, and, uh-oh, eh, better move on to something else. What celebrity wedding is going on this month, right? You know, got the got the celebrity drama. Got oh, can the can the meteor please hit my ex wife's house? Shitty, oh yeah, shitty morning sure. show jokes. Uh, every everything being dismissed in meme form. You know, Jennifer Lawrence's right. character becomes a meme. The fucking so much parody of the last long time, but especially the last eight years here sure. in the States mostly, but you know, Ron Perlman playing the type of person he fights with on Twitter. Right. right. Um, what, yeah, but, uh, another th a thing I did notice uh, that is another reflection of our systems, current systems or whatever, is that eventually uh, Jennifer Lawrence's character's discovery became Leonardo DiCaprio's study or discovery. Yeah. You know, they they start out with happened. differentiating it, but then it totally became his thing, which is such a thing in academia where grad students mm -hmm. accomplishments become their mentors accomplishments pretty fluidly. And uh, some other, yeah. I don't, so you're right. They, they discover they do the math, like what, like Carl Sagan said to do or whatever, like they say. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. What would Carl do? Yeah. What would Carl do? The president doesn't care because her 
Supreme Court nominee is in the news, giving her bad press, and it's not good timing for the election. And yeah. her shithead son slash chief, chief of staff, who <laughs> seems to be a, a, a very edible. There's an edible situation there. Uh, yeah. Talking about how hot his mom is. Had some weird. Um, yeah, had some weird. Weird comments in that in that regard, didn't he? Yep, yep. And as we see later, she doesn't even really think of him at all. Uh, Which makes sense, yeah. But it, yeah, it's not the it's not the right time. <laughs> not the right time politically. You know, if if the Congress gets interested in this, they're not going to put forward my Supreme Court justice, and we've got to think about the next two years. While the scientists are saying, this is in six months. Don't even plan for two years until we right. deal with this in six months. And like, oh, it's only 99% likely to happen. What Let's work with corporations. Corporations will come up with this, <laughs> the solution. And then in comes like Andy Warhol, Elon Musk. Mark Rylance, man, he was great, and he his predictions of how everyone was gonna die based on his what his AI predicted was like <laughs> eerily spot on, eerily spot on, right? Yes, T to the very last after credit scene, even. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what it means. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, oh all the, man, all the weird. Oh man, I. <laughs> I don't know where to go from here, but, but uh, well, so it eventually becomes politically feasible for the government to say they're going to do something, but it's all a show. It's all performative. It's all got to be yep. big battleship. Yeah. Fireworks, battleship, hats, slogans, Mission election time. Banner. <laughs> exactly. <Mission accomplished> banner. <laughs> Good distraction from the scandal. Yes. Well, we've got to get the precious resources that it, it's going to benefit everyone. I promise you, Lucy says as she moves the football. So I'm going to I'm I'm going to I'm going to say that that I think Ryan Lance played my favorite character in the movie. Yeah. Because at first I kind of, all right, so this is the second time for me to see this. First, I, I really thought, I guess maybe it was because of the cell phone thing, but I thought Steve Jobs at oh, first. Okay. But like you say, Elon Musk, that's a really good analogy, especially right now. But I, I think he's probably, I, I think he had more than just a mild case of Asperger's syndrome for sure. And just... Obviously very intelligent, but like just only in focused ways and like no social skills at all and just very awkward. Did You you saw how his eyes would kind of dart from one person to the other and the little girl, you know, he has the kids in his audience to <laughs> or the kids up on the stage with him for the audience to be heartwarming and the little girl ask him a question and he says, no. <laughs> Can I <laughs> say something? Wanna... No. <laughs> They want to meet him backstage, and he just rushes them along. It's just zero social skills. So I don't know. I think he he was probably my favorite character in the movie. Jennifer Lawrence was great. Oh, Chalamet! When we get to that, what a great character, man. Yeah. Just like fuck it all. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's let's uh, ride skateboards and drink and smoke weed and, and pray. <laughs> yes, that's right. The oddly religious anarchist. Yes. Oddly uh, religious anarchist. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if I, I think we say this every episode, but like, if you haven't seen the movie, what are you doing here? But also mm -hmm. it's pretty straightforward and it's not, we don't, mm -hmm. you don't want to explain all the jokes. You know, this is sure. a very satirical movie. So yeah, the government ignores scientists Government corporations think of think about themselves, and then then they ask the scientists to help fix the thing when it's probably too late. And oh, yeah, turn 
turn the ship, turn the ships with the nukes around. We just discovered there's this thing is is rife with precious metals. Yep, billions <laughs> and trillions of dollars. We need to think of that. Yes, with our technology will save us. I promise you. And did you see how much the president kowtowed to him when he came in the room? Well, he's, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> what, what did they say? He's like double, double platinum eagle level donor. Just like the person, the anesthesiologist they put in charge of NASA. Or the My Pillow guy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm mixing real life with the movie. Sorry about that. I mean, it. yeah. Uh, putting your friends and your donors in charge of things. The Supreme Court justice who had no law degree, no legal experience, a lot of problems in their past. Mm hmm. But. Well. <laughs> But he had done a softcore porn. He had done so, a softcore porn, know. and she had sent him a nudie pic. Yes. Maybe a man with a strange beard, or whatever um, the, the news people were saying. I would imagine that he definitely owns at least one t-shirt in his closet that says, Mustache Rides 25 Cents. <laughs> Who could forget the t-shirt that the guy was wearing? I'll never forget it. My dad had the... John Denver Greatest Hits album, and it was one of those old vinyls that you'd open it up and it showed the man there. And of course, he had the inevitable guy wearing the t-shirt, be kind, be kind to nature, kiss a beaver. I thought you were going to go dark and say somebody had a shirt oh. that said John Denver's Greatest Hits and it would be a picture of a mountain. <laughs> or Sonny Bono's Greatest Hits and it's a tree. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get to the other more well-written dark comedy. So yeah, they yeah, Ron Perlman wants to say hi to all the gays and the Indians, both yeah. kinds. He's of a different generation. The ones with elephants, the ones with what did he say, bows and arrows? Bows and arrows. <laughs> yes, he did. Um him shooting at the at the comet later or the asteroid. Yep. Def definitely Doctor Strange Love style, you know? <laughs> like riding on the <laughs> cowboy hat, yeah. riding on the missile. Oh, I got I to gotta make a point before I forget, Darren. Please. Um, so this is going back to the White House. And I don't know if you – I didn't notice it the first watch, but I did on this one. But they did – they would pan the camera, and they would focus on uh, paintings of a lot of Native Americans in the White House, right? I remembered at least one, and I also I, remembered there being a decent amount of Civil War paintings. Yes, there were. Yeah, there was a big Civil War painting. I So look, here's what I got from that, and I don't know if McKay meant this or not, but I'm thinking, all right, so you've got this big existential threat that's coming towards you and you can't get away from it. Is that not kind of what happened to the people who lived here first <laughs> before the Europeans arrived? Yeah, I don't the know. That. Colonizers were the comet? <laughs> you know what? I think I think that might be part of the message here. It I mean, be. I mean, the, it's kind of an aside, you know, it wasn't the main story, but I could I could see that, you know, I mean, there seem to be little nods everywhere. And I could see how mm -hmm. some people, especially people who I mean, this movie is straight up my street. You know, I love over the top politically and sociological themed movies. You know, I'll watch the Purge movies and people say they're garbage mm -hmm. and I won't say they're not, <laughs> but I'll say they're yeah. they're right up for me. So I could see some people saying that some of it's a little heavy handed, but I don't hear those same people saying idiocracy was. I think this is. That's a good one. Idiocracy similar is level a good movie. Yeah. yeah. Similar level, maybe a little bit drier comedy. I mean, idiocracy was like, yeah, just. uh <laughs> yeah that's true you know when president, you get a president camacho and brondo <laughs> yeah, and all that funny. shit pulls out a machine gun and just starts shooting up the whole oval office right yeah i, I think things have gotten a little darker since idiocracy came out idiocracy foretold mm -hmm. the coming of sarah palin and lauren bobert and <laughs> stuff like that right uh, don't look up is climate catastrophe it is ignoring information for momentary entertainment it's checked out you know a checked out media
profit driven rather than information driven. It is cynical politicians thinking of everything as the next election, the next donor check. It's mm-hmm. a cynical movie, of course. Well, but you've got see this is this is the other thing. Okay, so you've got the person who actually discovered it, and then you've got the scientist she was working with, DiCaprio, and he sold out pretty quickly for a little while until he had a change of heart, right? To where, you know, the last third of the movie, you know, he really, he had, he was, he went, he got woke, I guess you would say, Darren, at there that we go. point. When he realized that, uh, he realized what he was doing, but they did bring in the expert from NASA, and you would think that he would have lent, lent more credence to it in that in that initial meeting. So, man, I tell you, if those guys can't make a can't make a difference um, when they get a, a meeting with the president, and she's more worried about her Supreme Court pick, I don't know, man. Uh, I, unfortunately, I yeah, it's a comedy, but little little too <laughs> real, man, for me in certain parts. Yeah, uh, what was uh, Dr. Mindy is Leonardo DiCaprio. Dr. Mindy, Dr. Mindy, that's right. That's and I right. kept thinking that Jennifer Lawrence's character is D- was DiBiase because when okay. I was a kid, the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase was a wrestler. <clears throat> but it's right. DiBiase, uh, the doctoral student, the person who didn't check out. Well, she does check out, but the person yeah. who doesn't get whipped up into a frenzy of social acceptance. Um, what's that guy's name? Dr. Teddy, Teddy something is, uh, the guy from the planetary defense, defense. fund. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> planetary defense core, which I had to look up to see if yes. it really was a real thing. According to McKay, it is, but I did see it was established in 2016. Ah, pretty, uh, pretty new then. Yes. Does it have something to do with Trump's uh, Space Force? You know, I, I think it was before. Well, it might be connected now, but <laughs> okay. I saw that they were formed January 2016, which was months and months before yeah. the 2016 election. Okay. So it, so it was an Obama era program. I don't know when it was first talked about because you know sometimes things take a while to actually be created once they are agreed to be done but Mm -hmm. uh, I did see that it had something to do with a law passed in 2005 by Congress but it wasn't a law to do this thing what was it the the NASA Authorization Act which was to one of the things that it was supposed to do was assigning NASA the objective of finding and analyzing in some way as many uh, objects in space that could hit Earth. Well, that sounds like a pretty good idea (laughs) to keep an eye on that, right? Yeah, I think their goal was to, uh, yeah, spend the next 10, 15 years trying to find all of them, as many as they could in space. I think it was, I think the goal was 90%, which is good, but, you know, Not I bad. mean, Not yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Not the 99% that Meryl Streep poo-pooed and tried to tr- ask him to change it to 70. So, um as you well know, our uh, our esteemed co-host uh, Philip on the Horror Returns is a he's a true believer, man. He uh, he's he's convinced that the uh, that the aliens are already among us here. So trying to, at this point, we'd be trying to shut the barn door with the with the horses running across the pasture. Well, I think if they're among us and they haven't taken us out, we've got to be a reality show, like they said on South Park. There you go. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> I wonder if we get the clicks over there or not. I <laughs> so mean, where do you go ahead? <laughs> no, where do you think this whole this whole social media thing is going, Darren? It's gotten so bad in my house, and I'm I'm one to talk, but I'm I'm a reader, right? So when I've got downtime and I'm not watching a movie for the podcast or something like that, I like to I like to grab a real book 
actually it's a nook that I read, but I can't really do audiobooks because I have so many podcasts that, that take up my time on the commute. Um, but my wife has, over the last, uh, I don't know, year or so, she's fallen into the habit of, of watching, and she never uses headphones, by the way, <laughs> um, something called Reels. Are you familiar with this? Oh, the little short videos on Facebook? Yes. <laughs> okay, a friend of ours, Lee Russell. Uh, do you uh -huh. know Lee? You know Lee, right? Name sounds very familiar. Uh, he, very he's familiar. been around. He guests around. He he lives up in Canada. Uh, his main show okay. is They Must Be Destroyed on Site. I have heard of that, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, he likes to take screenshots of two reels next to each other that look uh -huh. funny paired together. Like a two-panel uh, comic strip or something like that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's mostly where I know of reels well i can tell you this man they um i i, I think in our mark rylance character his his ai must be must be programming these because they they definitely once they start figuring out the ones that you spend a little more time watching they adapt right ah the algorithm I, yeah i just want to know where this is all going is this is this dangerous <laughs> Is there something sinister here? Is it just all about making money? Is it the threat of the red Chinese? Darren, what's going on here, man? I think it's a little bit of all of them. Uh, have you <laughs> have you seen the YouTube effect by Alex Winter? I have been wanting to see that one. Isn't he also doing a Zappa documentary? Or I, I think that I one's think already it's out. Alex Winter. I think okay. I think his Zappa documentary came out before this so is this out now it is out now it's on it's streaming okay. i wanted to get it on youtube but i couldn't i think uh -huh. i rented it on itunes or i might have bought check. might have bought it let me check my just watch app to see if it's streaming anywhere you, you said it's called the youtube effect yeah the youtube effect it's a documentary he made over the past few years it was doing the festival circuit at okay. least over the summer if not before but uh, I watched it about a month ago. I sh very well could have watched it again for this because of its commentary or it's discussing the use of YouTube from, from its beginning to now, you know, it's got child YouTube influencers. It's got yes, <laughs> all this. Stuff. It's got people talking about the algorithm. It shows what, what clicks, you know, what people do for clicks, it, things that the algorithm feeds, uh, feeds into, uh, politically and personally. Uh, I, he, there's, there's a guy that sort of went down that type of YouTube hole that leads to white supremacy and the proud boys and shit. And he's working on getting out and trying to right some of the wrongs that he did it's, oh wow! It's got people that worked uh, at the at creating YouTube. It's a very interesting documentary, to say the least. And uh, I'm I need to watch the Zappa one because I think I've I've liked I haven't seen a whole lot, but I mean Alex Winter after Bill and Ted. Speaking of Bill and Ted, mm -hmm. or maybe it was after the Lost Boys. He went to film school in New York. He went to one of those <laughs> prestigious ones, and he's been doing a lot Doesn't of surprise me. A lot of movies lately, and you know, of course, uh, we we could have done the environment uh, watching Freaked that movie of his. Yeah, Freaked. That's a great one, man. <laughs> That's I love that one with uh, Sir Randy Quaid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think Keanu Reeves is in it as the Dog Man. He's the dog-faced boy. That's right. <laughs> and that's the, a good one. The older brother from Blossom that's not Joey Lawrence. Ah, okay. Uh, plays Alex Winter's friend. That's okay. So that's who that is. See, so that, you're that's who that guy is. You're you're going a little deep dive for ah. me on that one, but uh... I, I had an older sister <laughs> when Blossom came out. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure he has done other things. But that is the only thing I know that guy from. Well, Blossom, Blossom herself got quite a revival in the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, was she hosting Jeopardy now? <laughs> is she? Okay. Or she at least Wouldn't was one of the guest me. guest hosts after okay. Alex Trebek. Uh, maybe another okay. person that was co-hosting or guest hosting was Ken 
Ken Jennings or Kent Jennings or whatever that guy that won a fuckload of times. Uh, well, maybe they need maybe they need to get Tyler Perry on there or something, right? <laughs> Keep it light. That was a good line, man. That was such a classic TV host line, right? Like, well, can you get the asteroid to go toward my ex-wife's house? Ha ha ha! Oh, the morning show on Apple TV Plus. They do a really good job of that. Like, do they? Uh, oh yeah, they're spot on with making fun of ha- those corny jokes that they come up with on the morning shows and all the fake forced smiling that they do and all the backstabbing that's really going on behind the scenes. It's, it's a good show, man. Nice. I know we're getting off topic, but I, it's worth checking out. <laughs> Apple TV plus to me is very, I'm very impressed, man, with, uh, with their programming. I know just like everybody else, I noticed that their price went up, but only maybe about 20 bucks a year, not 50 bucks a year. Like, uh, Max did. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, Apple, I'm surprised that they didn't raise the price earlier. They got to pay for that, uh, suicide, uh, uh, (laughs) Nance. Well, or that, um, that, uh, messy soccer player guy. Ah, that's right. That's right. They brought him to the major league soccer. And I think part of his deal was that he gets a cut of the profits. Not sure where this tangent came from, but I think it, was Apple, which I reminds right. me, you wanted us originally to talk about something else. So I want you to bring that up now. The documentary yeah. series or something, uh, <laughs> faux documentary extrapolations. Is that what it's called? It, it, it is extrapolations. And it was, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, you're, you're the one who told me that Michael Moore has a new podcast and, it's called Rumble with Michael Moore, and he actually interviewed the showrunner last week. So if you want to listen to that, that would be a that would be a good episode to pick up about a maybe a forty minute interview. But yeah, extrapolations. I was watching it, Darren, and I was like, this can't come on. Give give me a break, because it was like the first. Each episode is a couple of years apart from the one prior, but it okay. all takes place like over the next say thirty or forty years from now, right? So the first episode takes place about five years from now, and there's uh, smoke in many places, right, from fires. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you've got people that are starting to get something that they call summer heart that they're developing, where they're, uh, because of the extreme heat, uh, they're having heart problems at a very, oh. you know, very early young age. Um, you've got, you know, all the pollutants in the air. And stuff like that. You've got all the dead fish that are washing up on the sea. And so I watched the documentary. And I'm like, well, you know, I like this, but it's it's kind of it's bordering on science fiction. Like this stuff's not going to happen this quickly. And then uh, I guess uh, the Northern Hemisphere summer 2023 happened. <laughs> yes. And now I've... I'm wondering if they aren't being a little too conservative on their predictions on this show. It's I, I'm going to have to check it out because yeah, I live in uh, Columbus, Ohio, which is right in the middle of the state. Uh, about two hour drive north is uh, Lake Erie and the Canadian border. So we had oh, air far. quality alerts and hazards pretty much all summer from the wildfires. And could you could you tell that it was that it was in the air? I mean, yes. Yeah. The, Oh, man. A lot of hazy days. Not as bad well, as, uh, you know, people I know up in Cleveland because they're right there on the other side of the lake and they get a lot of the lake effect weather pattern. So all of that just goes directly through there. But we'd have some really hazy days and you could tell just breathing, just, yeah, suck to be outside for too long. Right. And, uh, occasionally it, you could you would think that there was a smell in the air mm-hmm. but yeah i mean a lot of these climate things that the movie is talking about the meat you know and extrapolation sounds like it's talking about some of the stuff is happening a, a lot faster than people yeah. guessed it's still happening they got that part right mm-hmm. but the rapidity of some of this stuff is, I mean, hopefully there's can be some mitigation done, but you know, they're, 
there is the point of no return for some things. It's easy to get hopeless, you know, and that's what people don't want to think about. And so instead of listening to uh, scientists that kind of do this thing for a living, 40 hours, 80 hours a week or whatever, you know, based on their workload, you're we're listening to social influencers, some of which literally say the earth is flat, even to this day. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. But yeah, I can't uh, I can't recognize or I can't recommend that that series highly enough. It's scary. Scary stuff. Um, actually, speaking of Meryl Streep, she plays the voice of the whale. They uh, they have a scientist, uh, Sienna Miller, and she finds a way to communicate with uh, she's she's able to translate whale speech into human speech. And so you've got the president from Don't Look Up, you know, playing the voice of the whale. But uh, but yeah, like you said, they have to pay for the the soccer player. I I made the the off color joke. They have to pay for the suicide nets in china of the women who are putting the iphones together yeah i forgot about those um so we're all we're all evil <laughs> well that's the problem with capitalism um, is you're forced to take part in it yes yeah that's true just look at mark rylance's character right turn perlman around <laughs> he's super platinum double eagle donor you gotta listen to him <laughs> absolutely is there anything as- that you we haven't talked about from the movie that you would suggest i think we covered it you know and it's, I think so. it's got like a i think on metacritic it has like a 49 so it's very divisive and of i course. love movies that are divisive i like to watch movies that are that way so uh i think we covered i think we covered it all are we going on more tangents or is it time to let you go i think it's just time to to start looking up, man, you know, there's something going on. It's happening a lot quicker than we thought it was going to. Let's, uh, you know, let's quit listening to these, you know, to these pundits and these influencers and these conspiracy theorists. And let's, uh, let's put our faith in science, man. Let's listen to the scientists that have run the numbers and done the research and know that the meteor is hurtling toward earth. There's going to be some permanent damage no matter what, but uh, I'd like to hope to have faith in our young people. Something as simple as getting my granddaughters to be sure that they're always putting the bottles with the bottles and the aluminum cans with the aluminum cans. They don't always do that, Darren, so I don't know where we're going to end up, man. Well, them getting <laughs> in the mindset is more important than that. the personal sure. personal recycling is a nice thing to do, but stopping the corporations from killing the planet will do more than getting the bottles and the cans in the right can. Yeah. If we can get more people in programs like extinction rebellion, where you're actually going out and, 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 and putting your body on the line to get arrested (laughs) and refuse to move and, you know, block traffic. And I watched a video where they, they actually disrupted the cons film festival last year. And, that was that was fun to watch as they were all being dragged forcibly by by uniformed police officers because <laughs> they were such a threat to the film festival and the red carpet. So, you know, maybe maybe it's time for a little bit of acting up, you know, and that good trouble not necessarily. Well, what did Martin Luther King said? He said that if you if you follow a law that's a just law, then you're doing the right thing. But unless you're willing to fight against laws that are unjust laws, you're guilty, right? Something like that. One has not only a legal but moral responsibility to obey just laws. Conversely, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. Any law that uplifts human personality is just. Any law that degrades human personality is unjust. I can't top him or anybody else like that. So do you want to tell people where to find you talking a little bit less about global destruction and a little bit more about movies? Our, our newest show, we uh, covered a couple of films from India. So every once in a while we'll do an international show. Uh, so we've got that, but October, we've got a full schedule starting with uh, the much anticipated or much dreaded, depending on who you are. Saw X. And I think we're going to talk about Hostel. Just go to our website, thehorrorreturns.com, and you can go everywhere you want from there. But we do have a 
We do have a weekly podcast, man. We've never missed a week. Proud to say. That we started is... doing this thing, and uh, it's just one of those things we just don't want to stop. So, um, And I think we've had, yeah, the same three original hosts forever. We've got Brian, me, Brian, and Philip, and Nez is kind of a part-time host. Pedro is kind of a part-time host. And uh, and invites always open to you to guest, man. I'll have to send you the upcoming schedule when Brian completes the uh, the November. Because I think we've got October mostly booked, but uh, we might have an opening or two. I'll let you know. Always a pleasure chatting with you, man. And 